Hi guys, and welcome back to this Model Engineers Workshop. Today in the workshop, we're going to be squaring the angles. Is this going to be a story of 90 degrees? Hi guys, I'm the chef. So as I just said, today we're going to be squaring the angles. Well, these are the angles, all six of them. These need to have their ends cleaned up and squared off, hence squaring the angles. And can you see those? Yep, right. We need six. These need to be bolted onto the frames before I get them to the grip blasters and primed. So I need two at 59, two at 56, and two at 55. Wonderful piece of design, but that's what drawings call for, so that's what they're going to get. So I'm going to get these first two into the, mill, into the vise on the mill. I'll show you the setup, and I'll show you some milling today. So just give me a second. I'll get these set up, and I'll get back to you. See you in a bit, guys. Righto, guys. So back again. Just had a couple of minutes trying to work out how the hell to hold these pieces of angle. Right. Now, you got to focus for me. Come on. There we go. Of course, the problem... Out of focus. Never mind. Right. The problem with angle, of course, is... It's got a nice or reasonably square corner on the outside, but the inside, as you can see there, quite rounded. So any kind of packing you put in here, it's only really going to press against one corner. Come on. Or it's going to try and skew the part because it's uh, it, of where it's actually making contact. So what I've done, I think you can see, I've got... A thin piece here, which kind of goes up to as far as it can. It's got a fairly rounded corner on it, but not much. And I've got a big piece here, so it's actually the movable jaws pushing all the way through. So I've got a reasonable amount of contact here on this lower leg of the angle, pressing up against the fixed jaw of the mill vise. So I'm going to take light cuts. All I really need to do is clean this edge up. Got the the second one to do down to number uh, down to 59 mil. And once I get all six cleaned up, come on, focus. Doesn't really want to focus today, does it? Yeah, come on, you can do it. Never mind. Okay, then I can put use the um, vice stop at the back, set it up, set the DRO get to 59 for these two, put the next two in, get it down to 56, put the next two in, get it down, get them down to 55. <laughs> so I think I'm going to give this a try. Might be a bit shady. I've got the vice cranked down reasonably tight. And uh, I'll set the camera up on the tripod and we'll just take a few light cuts and see how we clean up. All right, guys, give me a second or two to set that up and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I've got this set up in the mill vise now, and I've just touched off. I've set it to take about 0.2 of a millimetre off. I've only got about a millimetre to play with anyway. Cut these two at 60, and they need to get down to 59. So I'll get the mill going. It's going to get a little bit noisy, I think, but it won't be too bad. And uh, let's see if we can get this cleaned up. All right, here we go. Now, that first cut has cleaned up nicely at the top here, so I'm going to just bring the cutter back, move the table up, take clear on, clean off the next little bit, clean up, then repeat, repeat, repeat. Then I'll take that one out, get this one in, and uh, repeato, ditto, repeato for the other four. Right, well, I'm not going to film all that for you guys. I'll bring you back when I've got all six one-ended done, and then I'll show you the setup. Very similar, just this will have the lay the mill vice stop up against it at a certain point so I can get down to, uh, once I get hit 59 on these first two, I can then set the DRO to zero. So then just move in three mil for the first, the next two and another one mil for the next one, two after that. All right, guys, give me a couple of minutes and I'll be back. 
Righto guys, here I am back again. I've just machined all the ends of one end anyway, of the, all of the angles. So these are all one ended. This is the rough cut angle end of the angle from the power hacksaw. As you can see, I've now dropped the mill stop, the mill vice stop into place. This is a 55 mil version. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine the whole thing down to 55 length, 55 mil. Probably end up taking a little bit of that spacer off as well, but that doesn't matter. It's a piece of junk steel. Once I've done that, I'm going to set the DRO to zero. And that way I can then just slide the next one in, work down to the zero for 55. Then the next one that goes in is 56. So I'll then add one, work down to the, work down to the one millimeter mark on the DRO. The last two will then be 59, so I'll then, of course, just work down to 4 millimeter on the DRO. Right, guys, uh, let me just put you down, and we'll get the mill started up. Not that it's going to be very exciting. I'll just do one cut, probably, just to get things moving, just to get show you what's going on. Get, I've just got to touch off, and uh, I'll bring you back when I've got them all done. It's going to be a bit noisy, but it shouldn't be too bad, I don't think. All right, guys, so that's the sequence. As you can see, I'm just gonna take a measurement now just to see how far I am. I'll work my way down the leg of the angle iron, then I'll work down to the length, the right length, as I say in this case, and the next one, 55 mil, and reset the DRO to zero, and then work out the others. Well, that's gonna be as boring as batch it, so I will stop it there on the video, and uh, I'll get back to you when I get them all done. All right, guys, give me a few minutes. I'll be back soon. Okay, guys, just a little bit of an update. I've just uh, brought the first angle, which is still in the vise there, to length. Let's see if I can get this camera to focus. So uh, we're at 55 on the knocker. So that's good. I know it's a not, it's not a very critical part. The drawing says anywhere between zero tolerance and 0.2 millimeter tolerance, but I've managed to get this one absolutely on the on the knocker as i say the duck's nuts so i'm just going to set the dro to zero there we go so now now it gets easy because the next one just goes in and i machine down till the dro reads all the zeros again then the next two go in and i come down to one millimeter and then the last two go in and i bring it down to four so that'll give me two angles at 55 two at 56 and two at 59. I've been looking at the drawings. Why the hell all these couldn't be at 60? I'm not quite sure, but hey, it's the drawing, so I'm working at the drawings, which is the way to go. Just in case there's something I've missed, there might be some later part joining in that uh, absolutely requires some of these to be at funny lengths. But uh, yeah, sometimes people maybe just use what they've got, which is sensible. If you've got a couple of short bits in the junk box, you can use it, use them, wouldn't you? All right, guys, enough uh, whinging and bitching from me. So one at 55 done, one at 55 to go, two at 56, two at 59 to go. And when I get those done, I'll bring you back and we'll bring this video to a close at the end of that. Okay, guys, give me a few minutes and I'll be back again. Okay, guys, that's it for today. 
uh, as you can see, 255s, 256s, 259s, they're all to length. The next time you'll see those, I'll have drilled the hole patterns in them that match up to the front of the locomotive. I believe one go, they go here, here, and maybe one here. I don't know. I'll have to have a look at them. It's been a while since I uh, can't remember. Never mind. I uh, think I've mentioned it before in bulk machining those six, six little angles ready to go. There's two that are numbered 40 mil. These will go on the shelf. These are for the re-railer bar, or sorry, the derail bar. It actually fits in these two holes. And um, that's a bar that goes across the locomotive just in case it does jump the rails, that uh, the bar hits the rails, not the frames or the loco itself or the, the underside of the cylinders, which bolt into these sets of holes here. So you don't really want that because that could be quite damaging. They will be cast iron cylinders, so you don't really want to go banging around on them because you could crack them. So these two at 40, they'll go on the shelf until I'm ready for that, uh, that piece. Although I dare say probably sooner rather than later would be best because that way I can bolt it into place and make sure it all fits. Then take it all apart and get everything off to the grip blasters and get everything grip blasted and primed. And then get it back to get here and uh, start getting it in its top coat. But anyway, for the time being, these two go on the shelf. These six here, they need a few holes drilling in each. So some in this side, some in both, but on the, both legs on all six. Probably not going to make a video about that. It's a bit boring watching me drill holes. So I'll call this video done for today. So again, guys, if you can find it in your heart and soul to hit that subscribe button, that would be great. The like and the uh, share or whatever you want to do. Like, subscribe and hit ring the bell is the usual thing. That would be great. Your support and your subscriptions to the channel make it all worthwhile. It's really great. I'm having a great time doing this. It's good fun. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll bring this video to a close and say see you in the next one. All right, guys, bye for now.